Dino Wars, The Destruction of Spondylus, for the NES by Bandai and Advanced Communications Company. Released in 1989. The basic plotline and concept are as follows. According to the back cover of the game, or at least the instruction manual, that is, if you have a copy, what would one expect but another one of those futuristic stories, not to mention a complete Mega Man ripoff, surprisingly? In the spotless solar system, a technological outbreak has ensued. A life-threatening virus has overtaken and corrupted the central life support computers on its supporting planets. Thus, a massive intergalactic invasion also ensues, involving an all-new, unheard-of mechanical species known as Robosaurs. Meanwhile, the Solar System's own mastermind, as well as the founder of the Robosaur Project, Professor Proteus, harbors an epiphany involving the recent effervescence within the confines of his ravaged Alpha Planet laboratory. As it turned out, his former right-hand man-turned-rival, Dr. Brainius, who recently escaped Alpha Planet following his exposure by Proteus for the unauthorized, deranged, and unsightly robotic experiments on humans, Fulton Balkus from Giver Much, was behind all of this nefarious horseshit. Now, upon his return, the Deviant's Doctor has yet to seek his vengeance on Proteus by ripping him off and using his own creations against him and most of mankind. Of course, what he doesn't seem to grasp was that the Professor was toiling away day in and day out on his brand new, secretly developed fighting Robosaur for God knows how many years. The Invincible Cyborosaurus. Story aside, onto the basic gameplay. Upon commencement of the game, you take control of a spacesuit-laden warrior, namely the aforestated Professor Proteus, as you're guiding him throughout an introductory four-part action platforming scene. B and A are your typical firing and jump commands, respectively. The only threat-inducing hazards being nothing more than mines and spiked pits, except they don't kill you instantly, oh crap no! Following a scuffle with various enemies, while traversing through sets of obstacles, predictable as a moth to the flame, the next phase of the Dino Wars ensues. Your fighter hops into his mighty Cyborosaurus, thus taking it along for the most unforgettable ride ever, or so we hope. In comparison to the previous phase, the Cyborosaurus' speed and mobility are dramatically downgraded, mostly due to its colossal weight, but you can actually swap between weapons throughout. Blaster Master much? And before I forget, there are two types of power-ups. One for both yours and your mech's energy, and another for yours and the mech's barrier, an obvious extension of the energy bar, no less. After a three-part journey from the outskirts of a certain planet, with an alternate landscape in between, a boss encounter emanates, and upon its defeat, you then enter the planet's main life support computer complex, or its artificial intelligence compound, as it's aptly referred to, obliterated its invading virus, and finally escapes said planet via its teleporter upon hopping back on the Cyborosaurus yet again. Metroid much? And rinse, lather, repeat. As for the weapons to collect, Proteus starts off with a badass three-way spread gun, which can later be upgraded via a P-capsule, in which case his gun can be fired twice. Cyborosaurus' weapon lineup, however, is composed of four possible offenses, all of which, yet again, not only can be swapped in between, they can also be upgraded twice unlike Proteus' gun, including, but not limited to, a fireball, which at level 1 shoots off a small projectile, and then depending on every advancing level, 2 and or 3 allows the mech to fire off those same projectiles in their respective amounts. A launch fist, in which Cyborosaurus' fist is fired off horizontally and immediately retracted, similar to Mega Man 5 on the Game Boy whereas Levels 2 and 3 allow the mech to project the fist in a random trajectory, a bomb in which the Dino Mech launches an explosive forward from its back in an arc pattern, in the style of the slingshot from Friday the 13th by LJN, whereas Levels 2 and 3 allow for more explosive firepower depending on the size. And finally, a beam in which a blue laser is fired from the Dino Mech, and for Levels 2 and 3, those same fireball projectiles are joined in along with said previous laser. Not only those, there's even a destructive satellite shown above the view of the current planet's outskirts, which disappears when paused, and even after its one-time use. Upon pressing select, that satellite calls forth an orbital strike that eradicates every enemy on screen. Take note, upon using this very device, you're only allowed one use per planet. Considering how dull the two-tier gameplay aspects and routine can get after at least the second planet, despite the earlier stated multitude of weapons you're able to experiment with, in total frankness, it's nothing short of gratifying. Control-wise, as jarring as they tend to be, they're actually far from complicated to get acquainted with. No rhyme intended. Challenge-wise, unlike most of the games I've reviewed in the past, there's very little to offer in a aforementioned department. Aside from the commonplace hazards, especially those previously mentioned goddamn mines, and enemies to keep a sharp eye peeled for, you're given more leeway than one could possibly grasp. 
Not only do you start with one life and unlimited continues, hence the option shown at the title screen after your recent failure, you're also provided a password feature depending on your progress, so if I were you, I'd be sure to write down every one upon passing a planet or dying within one. Or as always, look them up on your favorite sites. In terms of graphics, for an 89 NES game, most of the game's sprites, including the Cyborosaurus and its rivals, in both the mech stages and Proteus platforming stages, aren't too fucking shabby, and neither are the planet exteriors, for example the traditional stars, planet foregrounds, caves, etc. As far as the semi-bland, single-screen lab and compound interiors, I'm definitely looking the other goddamn way, although they are somewhat tolerable for its age. The biggest selling point I'm giving props to, however, the cutscenes where the Professor hops both on and off his trusty Dynomech, considering how repetitive they can become throughout the course of the game. Musically, along with the sound effects, composed by the indestructible trio of Osamu Kasai, Masaaki Harada, and Nobuhito Nakayama, the overall soundtrack is nothing more or less than a depressing low-key orchestration, whose only means of self-expression is the accompaniment of the game's overall futuristic theme, despite how convincing it attempts to be, and don't even fucking get me started with the morbid as hell sound effects, an instant blah in my eyes to say the absolute least, or in this case, my ears. And as far as Dino Wars replayability, refer back to what I mentioned in the challenge statement, specifically the hazards and enemies you face. There's no way in hell I'm reiterating it all, oh fuck no. Otherwise, the replayability level falls to about the same weight as Jewel Master, Lesser the Unlikely, and all the THQ Home Alone games combined. Well, maybe all of them except for the former. But who the hell am I to beat around the fucking bush? Therefore, what's my overall final verdict on Dino Wars? After quite a great deal of time, in full honesty, I was expecting something epic like the Assault Suit series by NCS, but really, it's nothing much to write home about as even that. In true Deadly Towers fashion, I felt there was like a brilliant idea springing to fruition with this game, however, in the end, the execution was nothing short of piss poor. Then again, in agreement to what Austin Mackert said in his Casual Look segment about this game, I still suggest trying it out for at least a play or two, and then eventually, disposing of or giving it away forever. But I'll let everyone be the judge of that. I say give it a lick or two. Until then, this is the Hardcore Retro God signing off.